Good morning, brothers and sisters. Hi, I'm Pastor Kenneth Gooden, pastor of the New Covenant Missionary Baptist Church here in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And I'm so glad that you can be a part of our Sunday morning worship broadcast. God has truly been good to us in so many ways. And when we can somehow gather together, even when we don't physically gather together, to lift up the name of Jesus, to worship God in spirit and truth, to, to share the good news of the gospel, it is truly a blessing. What I understand, brothers and sisters, and I'm so thankful for, is that God continues to be faithful. He continues to bless even though our circumstances may not be ideal and what we want. But we thank God today that God makes a way for us to serve him. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I ask if you would, would you please be prayerful with me today? Uh, it's truly a wonderful day in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a day that many people recognize as Pentecostal Sunday. Praise the Lord. And, and we thank God for his power, for his goodness. And, and we truly are grateful because of what God has done for us. But I really feel that I'm being tugged or pulled to at least say something about the current situation and what's going on uh, in our nation today. And many of you understand what I'm talking about. And, and I just feel that the gospel is sufficient for all answers that we have. You know, the thing about the word of God is that it does not get old. Uh, it does not become irrelevant but it continues to be relevant in our lives. It continues to have power in our lives. It continues to give answers to what we're seeking in our lives today. There, there's nothing that you're going through right now, brothers and sisters, nothing that somehow the word of God does not speak to, that somehow it does not encourage you or even give you hope to whatever your situation is. Amen. And, and this is important because we understand that uh, many times people have many questions that they're going through right now. And those questions need to be answered. Those, those questions have been uh, in their mind for some time. And even though there are moments where it seems as though things get better, there's always something that happens that puts us right back to asking us, asking certain questions. And by the way, before I go on, I just want to tell, tell you the title uh, of the lesson today, the title of the message today, which is, What Do I Do Now? Amen. What do I do now? And the reason why that's so important, brothers and sisters, the reason why I selected that as the, the, the title of my message is because this is a question many people are asking right now in light of the current circumstances. What do I do now? Uh, there are people who they're hurting right now. There are people who are feeling a sense of despair. There are people who are feeling a sense of anger and even feeling as though there is no hope. And, and many of them are asking that question. Even as we speak, what do I do now? Today, brothers and sisters, I, we will attempt to use the scripture to answer that relevant question. But more importantly, to give you hope. Because I understand that this can be a time for many people that feels hopeless. That there's a time that many people feel a sense of, uh, of deep despair. So when you try to tell them things, maybe they don't even want to listen. I, I've heard what you say, preacher, many a times. But yet and still, we're right in the same situation. Believe me, I understand. I understand your feelings. I understand how you're trying to deal with this and cope with this. I'm, I'm the father of children, but I'm also the father of sons. And I pray that God's protection be upon them, that he continues to watch over them. So I understand what you're coming through. And there are moments where there are emotions that you go through. But even while I'm going through those emotions, even if I might be feeling a sense of despair or even discouragement, God always brings me back because I understand and I know that if ever we're going to find an answer, if ever there's going to be a true change, God has to be the one that leads it, my Lord. So brothers and sisters, there's some things that I just want to bring before you today. And I, I want you to really uh, consider it, meditate on it, think about it. And I pray that God will allow this word to affect you wonderfully in some kind of way. The first point I want to make to you today, brothers and sisters, is that we all lament sometimes. My Lord, we all lament sometimes. And some of you might know exactly what I'm talking about. Some of you might be looking at the camera right now and saying, Brother Preacher, what are you talking about? Well, consider the book of Lamentations. It is the only book in the Old Testament that is filled with lamenting. It's filled with an author that is truly dealing with despair. The thing about 
uh, uh, the book of Lamentations, praise the Lord, is that that word Lamentations is really uh, uh, the root of that word really means loud cries to cry out in despair. It means that there's a sense of feeling hopelessness and you're not silent any longer, but you feel the need to say something. You feel the need to cry out. Uh, because of the, the, the feeling that you are, because of, of the feeling of despair that you're going through right now, my Lord. And in the book of Lamentations, if, if you read it, you'll truly hear a story of despair. It, it, it deals with the author of this great book. And, and, and just for the record, we don't really know the author of the book. There are people, there are theologians and others too as well, have, have really thought that Jeremiah is the author of Lamentations because the writing seems so similar to his writings and he very, mel, very well may be the author. But irregardless of who that author is, irregardless of who wrote these God-inspired words, we can see the despair in their voice. They, they were looking at the great and beautiful city of Jerusalem and literally looking at it in ruins. Uh, the Babylonian army that was led by Nebuchadnezzar had come into Jerusalem and basically had destroyed it. Uh, the walls were breached. The walls were literally torn down. The city and many of its beautiful building was in ruins. The great temple that was so holy and undefiled had truly been defiled. For the enemies of God had come into the temple and not only messed it up, but had taken things that are really sacred to the Lord and took it back to their homeland. And so now the author is viewing this with his own eyes and there are tears in his eyes. There's a sense of despair of looking what had happened to the beautiful city of Jerusalem. And so right here, and it's really not a great long book. You can see him right now literally crying out to the Lord. You can see him lamenting unto the Lord. Remember now I said lamenting is crying out. And he says things like my eyes are filled with tears. I feel a sense of hopelessness that the enemy has come in and I cannot do anything about it. He, he talked about the fact that he knows that God is great. He knows that God is a wonder working God. But right now he feels as though God has allowed the enemy to just have his way. He talks about the things that he sees in the city that he does not seem anymore. He talks about the people of Jerusalem and, and how he sees that, that they're in a sense of despair, that he he sees them showing some hopelessness that he had not seen in a long time. And many of them he literally cannot lay eyes on. Because they've been taken away back to the Babylonian Empire. And he's standing there looking at one of the greatest cities that was ever made, literally in ruins. And he's crying out to the Lord. You ever lament, praise the Lord? You, you ever cry out to the Lord? There's some things that hurt you so bad. There's some things that you went through in your life that brought tears to your eyes. You, you felt a sense of pain that you don't normally feel every day. There, there was hopelessness that came across your mind. That, that was a feeling of despair that you had to go through and you were trying to make it. You, you were trying to hold your head up high. You, you wanted to be strong, but it was a struggle. Because what happened to you, what you witnessed or, or what you saw or the very event that happened in your life affected your heart so bad that you literally needed somebody to lift you up. You know that you couldn't be nobody else. There would be people that could encourage you, but the only body that can lift you up out of what you were going through was the Lord. You ever been there, brothers and sisters? You, you ever pray for something and, and, and looking for an answer, looking for a change, hoping that somehow uh, your, your prayer would be answered. But yet and still, when you look up, it's the same thing happening over and over again, the same events going through right now. And you're trying to be encouraged in your prayer and have the same strength when you prayed like you did before. But you had to acknowledge even in your own mind, Lord, we're continuing to go through here. You have been there before. You ever been there when you cried out and, and there were times when you cried out, you had to gather yourself because it didn't seem like you had the strength for anything to come out of your voice. Because you were hurting right now and, and you wanted to be different. You, you wanted to be the man or the woman that God has called you to be. But right now you were dealing with pain and in your mind you were literally asking for mercy. 
Basically saying, Lord, I know what you want of me right now, but I'm just not there right now. You ever been there? You ever just cry out in, in, in different ways or whatever emotion that you was going through. And, and instead of coming up with a grand thing to say to the Lord, the only thing you could say was, Lord, help me. Help my friend, help my family, help my people because you were dealing with some issues right now. There are people that are feeling that right now. It's a sense of hopelessness. It's a sense of despair. And many times we don't either know which way to turn or even when we do know which way to turn because we haven't seen change or the change that we want. Sometimes we try to lift ourselves up and give us strength to continue to seek after God uh, with an honest heart, to continue to seek after God with a zeal. But we need somebody to lift us up right now because truth be told, brother and sister, I'm not as strong as I need to be right now as what I used to be. Some of us have been there before, brothers and sisters. Some of us had lamented and cried out the things. Some, some of us have had a deep conversation with the Lord. You know what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters, where that you had pain that affected you in all kind of ways. And even though you talked to people that tried to encourage your heart and you appreciate it, you had to go before the Lord. You had to have a talk with him and say, Lord, here's where I am. I, I need you to help me to make sense of this, to give me some strength right now. Lord, like the song says, I need for you to help me to hold out. We've all been there, brothers and sisters. And, and, and if we're not careful, because we're in that, that, that state of lamenting or just crying out to the Lord or seeking the Lord, some of us will look at the state that we're in and, and we'll feel guilty. That even maybe I just need to be quiet because I, I need to be stronger than what I am. Let me gather myself or whatever. Some of us feel guilty because of where we're at. Don't you know God loves you? Don't you know God loves us? He understands the hurt. He understands the pain. Brothers and sisters, there's so much, so much that I love about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But probably the thing that affects me the most is that I know he knows what I'm going through. I, I, I know he knows my, my pain, my, my, my suffering. He, he knows the hurt that I'm feeling inside. He's seen the tears that's come out of my eyes. He, he knows that I'm trying to be strong right now and I need just a little bit of help. He knows all of that. And because of that, watch this, he empathizes with us. Thank God today. I'm grateful today that God sent his son, not just because of the great sacrifice that he made, not because we have a right to the tree of life. All of that is great. And I shout hallelujah to the Lord. But here's why I love what he did, because he suffered, bled and died for you and me, because he understands. He, he took on the form of man and he had all the knowledge in his in, 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 inside of him. But yet and still, by him taking on the form of man, he knows our pain. He knows despair. He knows what it feels like when all you can do is shed tears. He knows. He knows what it feels like to cry out for help and realize there's some things you're just going to have to go through. He knows. He, he knows that there are moments in your life where you want to try your best to be every single thing that the Lord has called you to be. And, and you're dealing with an attack of the enemy right now and, and it's coming fast and furious and, and you're trying to hold out and it feels as though you're weak right now. He knows. He knows, brothers and sisters. So it's all right to cry out to the Lord. It's all right to lament every now and then. As a matter of fact, I dare say right now, brothers and sisters, the Lord loves your conversation. The Lord loves it when you reach out to him. He, he saw you reach out to everybody else and he has sat there quietly, patiently waiting for his turn. And now after you've tried everything else and all you've received is just despair after despair. Now you turn toward him and he says, watch this. I'm right here. Glory. Hallelujah. That that's the beauty of our God, that no matter what's going on in our lives right now, we can always turn toward him. E e even when I ain't perfect, when there's some things I said, Lord, I need for you to give me strength. We can always turn toward him. We can always have a conversation with the Lord, even in our midnight hour. Even when our bodies are wracked with praying, even when there's confusion in our mind, even though we, we were trying to hide some things that we don't want other folk to see to let us know that we're struggling right now. God still says, talk to me. Talk to me. 
and have a conversation. Because I just believe that God will give us the strength to not only carry on, but somehow be encouraged in the midst of what we're going through, that somehow we're able to say this. And I know it's hard for people to say right now, but I say it with a sense of confidence, not because of me, but because of who God is, that somehow, some way, God's going to work this out. My Lord, he's able to do it, brothers and sisters. Not only that, brothers and sisters, but the next point I want to make to you today is that you can be a voice for the voiceless, my Lord. You can be a voice, brothers and sisters, for the voiceless. I'm preparing to read something in Proverbs 31 right now, but, but, but I can remember, brothers and sisters, that as far as that, that, that answer right now, being a voice for the voiceless, I can remember years ago in my life, I would never think too much about that. Because I always thought pretty much that you had to be silent, that you just had to live your life a certain way, and all of that is important. But guess what? You can't speak out for people that don't have a voice. You can't help those that need help, praise the Lord. I want you to listen to what it says in Proverbs 31, verses 8 and 9. Listen at this, brothers and sisters, my Lord. It says, open your mouth for the speechless. In the case of all who are appointed to die, open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needed, my Lord, if you don't mind, let me just read that one more time. Please let me read that one more time. Proverbs 31, 8 and 9 says, open your mouth for the speechless and the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. My Lord, it's all right to speak up for those who need speaking up, brothers and sisters. One of the most lowly place you can be at, one of the most weakened state that you can ever be at in your life is to be a person who can't speak up. It is a person who is, is part of the speechless crowd. A, a person that would love to speak up, but life has kicked them so hard. Life has, has come in and caused so much pain and despair. That it's almost as though it's taking their voice away. They got a voice right now and God wants them to understand that, but they're just not in the position to exercise it. Thanks be to God that God blesses folk like you and me and others too as well. Who can be actually be a voice for the voiceless, who can actually speak up for those who are in pain, who are in need, and for those who are speechless right now. I'm thankful to God because watch this, all of us have been there. All of us have been in a point where we needed something strong in our lives to stand up for us and to speak up for us. Watch this. And Christ spoke up for us. Christ spoke up when we needed somebody and we were doomed uh, 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 in our lives. And he says, send me, I'll go. I'll die for them. I'll take on sin. I I'll be a substitute for them. Christ did it for us and we can do it for one another. My Lord, the word of God says, that you need to bless those who are the poor. Bless those who are needed. Hey, show mercy to those that are need mercy and mercy be re will be returned unto you. We need to bless those who are dealing with issues right now because if they could have spoke up, they would have spoke up a long time ago. But now notice what it says, and this is what I want you to understand. It says again, and this is part of verse number nine, open your mouth and judge righteously. My Lord, watch this, brothers and sisters. I know that many times, like with the situation that we're going on right now, what's happening in Minnesota and other places, too, that we're led of our emotions. I understand that. Be careful being led of your emotions. Be careful that it doesn't uh, keep you from thinking the way that you need to think, for, for you to have that, 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 that sound mind that God has birthed within you. Understand right now that many times we go through things and we struggle. But I want you to know that we, being the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't do things all the time like the world does things. Praise the Lord. There's love on the inside of us. We understand what God done for us. And if God did it for us, we do it for others too. God, through his son Jesus Christ, showed a profound measure of love toward us, so we show that love back. And I know what some people think, it, Brother Preacher, I don't want to hear it. Because I've tried to love folk. I've tried to deal with people that don't like me or don't love me. And I, I, I've tried it and, and it, I still see the same thing going on. Hold on. 
be strong. Know that somehow we serve a faithful God and because our God is faithful, he can make things happen in our lives. You don't have to throw stone for stone. The Bible said that, yeah, you can feel a sense of anger, but sin not. Don't let it get the best of you. Don't, don't let the people who are your enemies try to dictate your life by causing you to move and to act like they want you to act. I'm better than this. You are better than this. God made us better than this. We have a God that fights our battles for you. He's able to do it, brothers and sisters. I'm speaking to somebody, and sometimes people don't always want to hear that message, but I want you to know and to understand today that you can stand up and be a voice for the voiceless, my Lord. And when you show that love, when you show that mercy, when you show that grace that has been shown unto you, God can somehow, praise the Lord, uh, allow you to experience it yourself and make the difference in your life. Brothers and sisters, sometimes God asks us to do things that in our mind we, we don't think that somehow we'll see the manifestation of something good coming about of it. But don't give up on God because God never gave up on you, my Lord. Not only that, brothers and sisters, but continue to strive for peace, my Lord. Ephesians 4, 1 and 3 says this very familiar passage of Scripture. It says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called with all lowliness, gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of the bond in peace. My Lord. So now I want you to understand something, what, what it says. And I want to draw attention to that last verse, verse number three, when it says, Intent, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. When you see that word endeavoring, brothers and sisters, you got to know that endeavoring means to attempt something by exertion or effort. All right. Endeavoring means to attempt something by uh, 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 exertion or effort. So why am I saying that? What God is asking you to do right now in this moment, a season in your life, considering the circumstances of what's going on, he's letting you know already it's going to take some work. Mm. It's going to take some effort and sometimes that effort is not easy. When I see words like uh, 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 it means to attempt something by exertion or effort, that lets me know this might not be no easy cakewalk. What God has asked me to do, it might not be so easy right now, but yet and still, even if it's not easy, God can make a way. He, even though God says, this is how I want you to act in the midst of the chaos that's going around you. And you say, Lord, it's a tough struggle because I know what I'm receiving back. God is saying it ain't going to be easy, but it definitely can be done. So God tells us, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. Now, he's speaking on believers right now. Now, watch this, brothers and sisters. God wants us to seek unity with our brothers and sisters, with other believers to praise the Lord. He, he wants us to seek that, that bond of peace, that, that unity. And by the way, that bond of peace can only come efficiently through the Lord Jesus Christ. But he, he wants us to seek peace with our brother and sister and the spirit of unity. That's what God requires of us. Now, does everybody want unity? I'll be the first person to stand up here and look at this camera and say, no, everybody does not want unity. Now, when they don't want unity and they come at you a different way, how, how do you react? God wants us to show love, but God also recognizes too as well that God makes a way for me to stand. God makes a way for me to deal with all of the things that goes on in my life. But I believe in all of my heart what Ephesians 4, 1 and 3 is speaking to brothers and sisters is watch this. No matter who you are, whether you be the closest friend of my life or an enemy that keeps exalting yourself against me over and over again. I got news for you today. You didn't create me. You didn't give me the faculty of my limbs. You, you didn't give me this sound mind that I use, uh, praise the Lord, in my life. You didn't give me strength. You, you, you didn't give me direction where I'm led of the spirit. You gave me none of those things. Why am I saying that? Because I have to stay with the person that gave me those things, which is Jesus Christ. But not only that, watch this, watch this. Not only do I have to rely on him. 
but I can't let you have power over me and make me do something that either I don't want to do or do something that you will have me to do. I, I refuse, praise the Lord, to give the enemy that power over me. I, I refuse, praise the Lord, as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ to call somebody to dictate what I say or what I do. I, I'm not led by man, but I'm led by Christ. And I won't let man have the power to do that for me in my life. Don't let the enemy get the best of you. I know you might feel worked up right now. I know you may have shared a tear, God, hallelujah. But you are mighty and strong in the Lord. And, and what God has birthed on the inside of you, the, the purpose that you have right now. And I know sometimes this message ain't popular, but praise the Lord, it's the truth. But whatever God has said in your life right now, it's for you. And don't let anyone take it away from you or to cause you to be something less than what God has proclaimed you to be because you are mighty, you are loved, you are great, not because of just who you are as an individual, but because of the Christ that's in you. Mm. It's the Jesus in you that keeps you afloat. It's the Jesus in you that keeps you from giving up. It's the Jesus in you, glory, hallelujah, that causes you to stay when it feels like you want to go. It's the Jesus in you that somehow keeps you from balling up your fists and putting your hand over your heart and said, no one will take away from me what God has placed on the inside of me. My Lord, my Lord, brothers and sisters, the last point I want to make is that place your hope in the right place. My Lord, we'll go back to Lamentations, praise the Lord. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 through 24. I want you to hear what it reads. It says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, my Lord, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Glory, hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him, brothers and sisters, uh, for just the context purpose. I, I, I want to read that again. Starting over, it says, this I recall in my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. You remember that, praise the Lord, when you think that ain't nothing going on in your life, when everything has brought you down right now, no matter what you're facing, you're still, because of Jesus Christ, because of uh, the God that we serve, you are still not consumed because his compassions fail not. I, I can think in my life of different things that fail, but his compassions are always faithful, my Lord. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Here's what I want you to, to chew on, brothers and sisters, even when this is over with, even when you don't go on back, uh, praise the Lord, and, and doing what you're going to do the rest of this day or the rest of this week. Here's what I want you to chew on. The last part that says, therefore, I hope in him. How, how am I able to keep it together? How am I able to somehow lift myself up and dry my tears? How, how can, when I'm feeling a sense of despair, confusion, anger, whatever the emotion is, how, how can I keep it going? How can I be strong? How can I walk this path and not feel like giving up or shouting into the, to the top of my lungs? How? Because of that last portion of that scripture that says, therefore, I hope in him. Your hope is not in man. Your hope is not in the government. Your, your hope is not in any other book that's been written by any other person. Your, your hope, brothers and sisters, is not from the people you count on or you see every day of your life. They can mean something to you, but that's not who you put your hope in. Love your family. Lord God, thank God for your family. Your family lifts you up in encouragement, encourage you. Thank God for that encouragement. I ain't mean to be bitter toward anybody. I'm not trying to put family down, but my hope is not even in my family. I thank God for my family, but my hope is in him. That's how you're going to make it, him. That's how you're going to get through this and somehow find that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's hope somewhere in him. 
That's how you're going to believe right now that no matter what I see, no matter how bad it gets, even if I look up and we're still in the middle of this next week or dealing with some issues like this a month from now, two months from now, a year or two from now, no matter what I see, how can I somehow make it? Because it's in him. It's in him, brothers and sisters, that we live, move, breathe and have our being. It's in Jesus. Praise the Lord. That somehow, even though the world might mock me for the position that I take and say, you're foolishness to do this, brothers and sisters. You're a fool from thinking like you're thinking. Somehow I can still be strong. Why? Because of him. He has brought us thus far. He has been there for us when nobody else would. He was there to hear the ramblings in our bed at night when we couldn't sleep because we had so much on our mind. It's in him. That when he saw tears coming about our eyes, he was always there to comfort us. It's in him. That even though we're dealing with a whole lot of emotion and we just want to show it sometime and let go, somehow, some way we kept it together. Why? Because it's in him. Brothers and sisters, everything that's good has happened to me. Every way that God has brought me over dangers seen and unseen, every valley I went through, praise the Lord. Every enemy's camp that I had to walk through, every mountain that I had to climb over, glory, hallelujah. Every valley that had to fire and we walked through the fire. I don't know how I made it because I know I'm weak at many times, but how him? I'm preaching today because of him. You're shouting hallelujah today because of him. So excuse me. Excuse me, world. Excuse me, different groups. Excuse me, other folk that's dealing with it the best way possible. And Excuse me. I'm not trying to offend nobody, but I'm going to keep my trust in him. He's brought me this far. He's brought you this far. And we have to continue to trust in him, praise the Lord. And here's the beauty of everything about the God you serve today. God is so great that even when you face opposition and you're trying to be what God has called you to be and love is coming there, don't you know somehow God will provide a way for you to make it? God will open up a door that you need to walk through at the nick of time. God will cause something to happen in your favor. God will take your enemies, and I want you to know he's still making them your footstools today. Even though you're walking through some bad places, he is still yet God. And just like the scripture said, and Ephesians, the fourth chapter, he's still faithful. So, yeah, I'm going to trust in it. Yeah, I'm going to pray. Yeah, I'm going to give it to the Lord. Yeah, I'm going to somehow say, Lord, I need you right now. And I'm going to pray that somehow all of us, all of us can somehow be unified. I'm going to pray right now that somehow the same way that God took a bad situation in our lives and worked it out for our good, I'm praying that he'd do the same right here and now. It's in him, brothers and sisters. What do I do now? I continue to trust in the Lord. My Lord, brothers and sisters, I pray. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that this word has blessed you some kind of way. God is still able. Don't give up on the Lord. God has not given up on you. And somehow when it looks as though all hope has been lost, he made a way out of no way. Can I tell you something? God ain't changed. He's the same God today as he was yesterday. He's performing miracles today. He's working out situations today. He's giving hope today. He's lifting his people up today. Trust him. Trust and believe. And the Bible says that all things are possible. I I, just like the scripture say, you know what? I think I'm going to run this race just a little while longer to see what the end going to bring. Glory, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, if you've been inspired by the word today, and I pray that the word has touched everyone who hears it today. There may be somebody out there that has not given their life over to the Savior today. And, And you're trying to cope with what's going on in your life, what you're dealing with with current circumstances, and you're doing it the best way you know how. With you by yourself, I want you to know you don't have to be alone. You don't even have to be by yourself. 
You, you, you don't even have to just say, I don't have nobody here, but Christ is always here. And he's a willing participant, brothers and sisters. He wants to be in your life. He, he wants you to have a relationship with him. He wants you to be able to talk to him in the midnight hour, to express your frustration, to let the Lord know here's where I am and what I'm doing. He wants that from you, but it starts with the relationship. Brothers and sisters, now is the time for you to accept the Savior into your life. God says, watch this. I got something greater for you. But all it takes is just acceptance. If you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you believe in his heart that God has raised him from the dead, if you believe that he can take your sins away and you believe him and accept him into your heart, the scripture says you are saved. And if you don't mind just right now, I just want to say a, a word of prayer with you right now. Glory, hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you the praise and the glory right now. We know that there are people that are looking they are searching. There's confusion in their hearts. They're dealing with emotions right now of anger, of, uh, uh, of lack of contentment, of uh, uh, feeling hopelessness, and they're looking for something to help them right now. I pray right now that they understand that's you. I, I know what the world is going to say. You're foolishness to do. But right now, our trust is in you. And I pray that we put, they put their trust in you right now. They understand that you're the hope for tomorrow. That you're the one that can somehow make things righteous in their lives. That somehow, Lord God, you can create avenues or ways, oh Heavenly Father, that will lead unto you that it seems as though we're closed in the past. Right now, you can make a way. And I pray right now that the believers right now will continue to pray for others too as well. That they will give their heart over to you, Jesus. So you can make the difference in their lives. I pray for our current situation. I, I pray that you give us understanding. I pray, Lord God, that all battles you fight for us, that, that somehow you give us direction and unify us with the purpose, Lord God. Unify us, Lord God, with the plan that comes from you that will lead, Lord God, to unity, lead to change, Lord God, lead, Lord God, to the people that are being hurt to somehow be lifted up out of their situation. You said to speak, Lord God, for those who are speechless. Lord, let love abide in this land. Forgive us of our sin, Lord God. Unite us together in love and let us understand not what others say, but what you've called us to do right now in the precious, mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, God bless you. God keep you. And may God continue to be with you.